The preliminary business meeting of the 73rd World Science Fiction Convention will be in order. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm glad to see a lot of new faces here, and that will be my first question here. Uh, you don't have to answer if you want to, but I'd like to ask for a show of hands. For how many people here, by show of hands, how many of, the, of you are at your first WSFIS business meeting? Wow. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Now, as a bit of contrast, I'd like to ask a different show of hands. Roughly speaking, how many of you here believe you have been at at least 10 WSFIS business meetings? <laughs> Thank you. How many of you are confident? Now, the reason I show those two things is I'm actually speaking to both groups of you in this next statement. We have a lot of new faces here who are unfamiliar with procedure, and we have a lot of people who are very familiar with procedure. I ask all of you to respect each other on this. I'm not going to try and run roughshod over you, but I'm also not intending to run a seminar on parliamentary procedure. We will do our best to balance these things, as I said in the opening video. I am the chairman, Kevin Stanley. Let's go to the second slide. And I will be presiding over the meeting except at certain points in the meeting when I'm obliged to recuse myself for certain reasons. Most of the time, my deputy, Jared Dashoff, will preside in those cases, although there is actually one exception to that, which we'll get to on uh, Saturday, yes. <laughs> to the far right is the parliamentarian, Donald Eastlake. Don is responsible, uh, among other, many other things, for keeping the video projection running and handling the slide deck. If you had any presentations you were intending to present at any of these meetings today and did not get them to him by now, you are too late. But if you have something intended for later in the con, you can talk to him uh, after the close of this meeting. To my left is the absolute hardest person, working person in WUSFIS, Linda Denneroff. Linda has the job of being secretary of the business meeting, and therefore a member of my staff, and she is also the WUSFIS division manager, which means she is also my boss. <laughs> it's a good thing we like each other. <laughs> At the far left is our timekeeper, Jesse Pershing. <laughs> Jesse is responsible for keeping track of time and debates. Time is limited, as we said. Uh, when time has run out, she will ring the bell. Uh, you do need to stop speaking and yield the floor when the, when the bell rings on you. Uh, there may be some things today that have time limits imposed on them. Primarily, she's keeping track for the rest of the Worldcon. Those are the head table staff. We have other people who are staff of the meeting. Uh, the Sergeant at Arms is Joyce Reynolds Ward. And Joyce has a number of staff. Could the staff raise their hands here at this point? Wait, let people know where the, look around here. The, the Sergeant at Arms, the Assistant Sergeant at Arms job is are keeping things moving around, people moving, getting people to where they need to be. If necessary, running the remote microphone to people who have mobility problems and are unable to come to the head table mic. Uh, and anything of that nature. And additionally, at the back of the room, we have the technical staff, which is Lisa Hayes and her assistant videographers. Yay. This meeting is being recorded. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, unless otherwise voted, this session will be recorded. And if you are in this room, your voice and image may appear in that recording, probably will actually. Uh, these videos will be posted to the YouTube Worldcon Events channel, so go to YouTube and search for Worldcon Events. Um, part of the technical ability to do this recording uh, in a timely manner has been underwritten by a grant from DEPCON 1, who paid for additional technical equipment, and we're very grateful to them for that. And because the recording cartridges have a capacity of approximately 30 minutes, we will have a short technical timeout approximately every 30 minutes to change cartridges out. It shouldn't take more than a minute or two. Let's go to the next one. The procedural notes, you heard that in the opening. You please come to the microphone to speak into it. Note your presence on the attendance list. If you didn't get a chance to do so when you come in, there'll be time afterwards. Just make sure you're in there. Um, there are business meeting attendee ribbons that have been distributed, and uh, oh yes, please silence any s devices that go bing or ping or anything of that nature. <laughs> you have an exception. 
And in my case, because I'm double-barreled, I have to do it on both of them. Here, I'll do it after I sit down. Now make sure that, and if you do have to take a call, please do not take it in this room. Please take the call and exit the room as quickly as you can. All right, let's move to postpone indefinitely. A new rule was adopted last year called postpone indefinitely, which is a, a, subs, a replacement for the older procedure of objection to consideration. Uh, after, well, in fact, very late in the process, the, the committee that checks the WSFIS rules for consistencies, the nitpicking and flyspecking committee, noticed at that um, there's a slight inconsistency between what we adopted and a different standing rule. Uh, let me explain what the purpose of postpone indefinitely is, and then I'm going to recognize Mr. Illingworth of the committee to uh, get, we're going to jump straight to item B26 uh, to try and deal with that inconsistency. Uh, the purpose of postpone indefinitely, which can be made only at the preliminary business meeting, is to kill the targeted motion for the duration of the current Worldcon. It doesn't put it on next year's agenda. It doesn't prohibit it from being ag adopted next year. It simply postpones it beyond the end of this Worldcon. When the Worldcon business meeting adjourns, any business that we have not resolved dies, but can be reintroduced at a new year. It's a new game next year. Um, it's not supposed to be allowed on items that are up for ratification from last year. And it is debatable, which means that there's four minutes split between each side to discuss whether we should or should not consider the question. And when we put the question, it will be in the form of, should the motion be considered? And that means if you are in favor of considering the original proposal, you would vote yes. And if you want to kill it for this year, you vote no. A two-thirds vote against consideration kills the motion. Very well. The chair recognizes Mr. Illingworth of the Nitpicking and Flyspecking Committee to make a motion that is on, I believe, page 29 of your agenda, item yep. B26? Yes. 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 Thank you. Page 29. Uh, we spotted that postpone, we couldn't chair, postpone any... Pick the microphone up and hold it. You up. think, right? Uh, that you couldn't postpone any item any constitutional amendment beyond the end of this meeting, and we wanted to postpone indefinitely to happen for uh, new mo business, but not for existing business motions awaiting ratification. So uh, we would like to move to insert the words pending ratification after consideration of a constitutional amendment in Rule 1.2 so that postpone indefinitely will work properly for new business, please. Motions that come out of committees do not need to be seconded. Is there any objection to adopting this amendment? Uh, is there any objection to suspending the rules to allow the amendment to take effect immediately? Hearing none, the rules are suspended. The motion is amended. Uh, the rule is amended, uh, amended immediately, takes effect immediately, and now postponed indefinitely has the intent the intended effect. Thank you, Mr. Well, Illingworth. Thank you. Yeah. I'll go ahead and, I guess I'll go ahead and sit down for the rest of the overview here. No, maybe not. Let's see. Okay, let's move on to, there we go, item seven. Today is the preliminary business meeting. We are required, the things we must get done is setting debate time limits on constitutional amendments. That's the only thing we absolutely have to do. Anything we don't get done here, and that you can see up here we have agenda setting, debate time limits, and any technical issues committee reports and resolutions, and nominations for the WSFIS Mark Protection Committee. That's the other thing we have to get done. Those required elements we, we will get through. Anything we don't get through here today, if we, if we run out of time, which we will adjourn no later than 1245 to allow this room to be turned over, uh, we, will go, we will start tomorrow's meeting where we left off. Tomorrow is the first main business meeting where we will have the elections for the Mark Protection Committee. We'll begin debating and voting on constitutional amendments. Um, the, we are scheduling at the moment, and we may discuss that later, a committee of the whole or a more informal discussion on selected proposals, and as I mentioned, any unfinished items. Slide eight. Uh, the site selection is the first and special order of business at Saturday's meeting. We'll start with the announcement of the 2017 Worldcon results. We'll have the first presentation for, the, for that 2017 Worldcon. We'll have up to 15 minutes of question, uh, presentations and questions for the 2016 Worldcon, and up to five minutes of presentations from any 2018 Worldcon bids. Because of the time constraints placed on us by the large agenda, we do not plan to have any presentations for years beyond 2018. There is a Fanish Inquisition session today uh, at four o'clock, I believe. 
Following adjournment of the site selection business meeting, we, but, but not before noon, we intend to have the Worldcon chairs photo session here on this stage, and we will need some people's help to rearrange tables and chairs to make that happen. In addition, we will tend to cut business on Saturday, not completed on Friday if necessary. We normally don't hold a meeting on the last day of the convention. At the moment, the, the head table staff have scheduled a Sunday meeting to to deal with anything not completed sooner and maybe to specifically schedule certain items for it. This will be discussed a little further in the agenda. Once we have completed everything, and in particular once site selection business and all pending constitutional amendments have been resolved, the motion to adjourn sine die or without date is in order. That ends the Worldcon session, kills any business that has not been dealt with otherwise, and we're done for the year. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to 9 and then 10. All right. We are at the preliminary business meeting. And I did manage to get that done in under 10 minutes. Okay. We are setting the agenda for the main meeting. Amendments to proposals other than pending constitutional amendments are permitted at this time. If we refer an item to committee, that committee must report back to the main meeting. It is not in order to refer anything to a committee to report to next year's business meeting. If you want to do that, you have to do that at one of the main meetings. By the way, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are all main meetings. There's just three meetings of it. We'll do debating, uh, setting of debate time limits. The process will be that the chair is going to suggest a time for the each motion. That number is going to be on the screen. If there's no objection, we'll use that time. If people call out other numbers, we will consider them in descending order, starting with the largest time, working downward by the method of filling blanks. The way that works is we'll vote on each number individually as a yes-no question. If you want one of the smaller numbers, you must vote against the ones above it. The first thing to get a majority fills the blank, and we don't even vote on the smaller numbers. And if we run out, we roll over to the next day. If we get to them, we'll start getting committee motions. Min yes, question. Uh, the member will state their parliamentary inquiry, and I'll have to restate it because you're not at a microphone. Could you come to the microphone, please? Yes, do help people who are in interior spaces to get in and out, please. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Lisa Paddle, the question is just for anyone who may not already know this, debate time is total debate time, not per side, correct? That is correct, the question on debate time. Debate time is divided evenly between the two sides of a question. Items that are considered neutral, they don't apply to either side, or just divided evenly. If the debate time has run out on one side, any neutral time gets charged to the other side. Okay. Uh, there are various committee reports. The committee reports may include motions, those we know that are coming and that, uh, that are um, in the agenda already. If we get that far, any resolutions be, can be considered today directly. And uh, after the Mark Protection Committee gives its report, we will take nominations for the Mark Protection Committee, which is WSFIS's only permanent body. The election will be at the start of tomorrow's meeting. I could have sworn there was something else I meant to say there, but I can't remember what it is. I do notice that we have both the sign language interpretation and the CART. We have hearing impaired people here. Uh, do understand this is one reason you need to be clear what you're saying, come to the microphones, and do not interrupt other people. Talking multiple people, or sorry, multiple people talking makes it a lot harder for the interpreters to do anything in it, as is people stumbling over themselves like me. <laughs> and with that, at 20 minutes after the hour, I think we are ready to move into setting debate time. And a question, Mr. Yes, Mr. Oaks. Uh, point of privilege, uh, please be careful because of the cart system. Do not walk in front of the projector over there. We have had several people cast shadows on the cart, and that is undoubtedly inconvenient for anybody using it. Yes, we please ask people to exit through the doors through 300A in the rear of the room where you entered. Thank you very much. Can those people who are seated right, because not everybody can see where the projector is, if you're seated right by the projector, can you point at it helpfully? Thank you. <laughs> okay, before we actually move into debate time, is there, are there any questions regarding procedure or agenda? Okay, uh, come to the microphone, please. Mr. Adams. 
I get Dr. Adams. I may forget everyone's ti honorific titles. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Andrew Adams. Um, the, on the question of postponing indefinitely, since it is uh, a new uh, issue that we're dealing with, the debate time is initially set at four minutes. Is it in order to make a motion to change that, or is that a specific unchangeable debate time? The motion to change debate time limits is applicable to it. It takes a two-thirds vote to change debate times. All right. Any other questions? Okay, let's go move into setting the constitutional amendments. First up, we have four items on the agenda that are passed on from last year. There is no debate or amendment allowed here. Well, there's debate, but it would be pointless. Um, there is uh, no amendment allowed here. All we're doing is setting debate time limits. Uh, the chair observes that item A1, he is one of the lead sponsors on. I will be recusing myself from the debate and Mr. Dashoff will be doing the chairing that one. Is there any objection to 12 minutes? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, let's start getting now. Now we need to start keeping track of the numbers here. Okay, the initial is 12. 10 has been suggested. Any other numbers? 20. Yeah, that's all right. Quest, uh, 12, 20, 12, and 10 so far. Question, in the, yes, in the back? Five. Five. <laughs> the chair does actually suggest that people give even numbers to make the timekeeper's job easier, but okay. I'll come hunt you down. Two. You give me odd numbers. I hear two in the back. Yeah. <laughs> Any others? That's all. Okay. On the, we start with 20. All those in favor of 20 minutes, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? That is not adopted. Uh, next is 12. All those in favor of 12 minutes, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. The chair believes the affirmative has it. You, once a serpentine count on it. Uh, the chair's prepared to accept that the negative has it if people will withdraw the request. Uh, uh, let's, try t let's try 10. All those in favor of 10, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. The affirmative has it, 10 minutes is adopted. <laughs> uh, well, that's, that's what you do, okay. He's right about process, I gotta admit. All right. Item A2 is a story by any other name. The chair, th this would um, uh, broaden the uh, definition of what a story is to include works of audiobooks and such. Uh, the chair suggests six minutes. Is there any objection to six minutes? Ten. Ten? Also and four. Four. Uh, any others? All right. We'll start with ten. All those in favor of ten minutes, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? That is not adopted. Six minutes. All those in favor? Hands down. Those opposed? Six minutes is adopted. Item A3 is called Hugo Finalist. This is a terminology change. It modifies what we've been called, what we have historically called nominees as the people on the final ballot and changes their name to finalist. Uh, the chair suggests two minutes. Is there any, sorry, is there any objection to two minutes? Two minutes is adopted. <laughs> Item A4 is, a modif is the WSFIS membership types and rates. This would uh, prohibit Worldcons from selling a membership for less than the cost of a supporting membership that included any of the voting rights associated with a supporting membership. The chair suggests four minutes. Are there any other times? Two minutes. Two minutes. Sorry. Other numbers besides four and two? Six. Six. Any others? We'll start with six. All those in favor, six minutes. Raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed. Hands down. Those in favor of four minutes. Raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, four minutes is adopted. And that gets us through that. The chair suggests we take our first technical time out at this point. This meeting is in recess for two minutes. It is 10.31 and the meeting will return to order. All right, now we're moving into constitutional amendments. 
The order in which you see them listed here is not the order that they appear in your printed agenda. The business meeting staff have arranged them in an order that we believe is more logical. This is the first of two pages of agenda items of new constitutional amendments. Um, we will proceed through these setting debate time limits and when we get to the next page I do believe there's going to be in a, uh, some procedural issues involved with them uh, but this is the order we want to take them up in. The first item is called the 5% solution. Uh, yes, Mr. Yallo. Good job. Mr. Chairman, I propose that we deal with the items in the order listed in the agenda and should the meeting then choose to modify it. Mr. Yellow, would, right. uh, would you please pay attention to the, the orientation video, turn your back to the, to the meeting and talk into the microphone so they can hear you. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I propose that we deal with the items of new business in the order as listed in the agenda. The meeting would of course always have the right to postpone consideration of those until later but I see no reason to Is there have a second the staff. to the member's motion to uh, list to uh, take up the items in the order printed in the agenda? I'll second. The motion, now, you, Mr. Yalla, now you can debate your, your, this will take a majority vote. Uh, let me see, this needs debate time. Uh, the chair proposes eight minutes of debate time. I think you'll be better off if you let me force minutes for each side, folks. Thank you. Four minutes. Mr. Gallo. I realize that there are some contentious items which you are attempting to postpone until later. I believe that should not be the decision of the chairman or the podium staff. I believe that should be the decision of the assembly. For what purpose does the member rise? Yes. Were you trying to gain recognition of the chair? Yeah, uh, could you, normally, uh, yeah, you cannot interrupt another speaker, and that's why, okay, okay, yes, all right. Is this a speech against the motion? Yes. Yeah, okay, come, come on up. I'd like to remind people, if you are standing in the back of the room, there are still seats, and I would really prefer that people take a seat and rise for recognition. If we were, had to use the overflow space, we'd have to do something different, but we don't, so we're not going to. Thank you. Okay. Was the... Uh, speak into the, don't, yeah, yeah, speak yeah, yeah, into yeah, the yeah. microphone, turn your back to us. <laughs> State your name, yes. Thank you. My name is Bill Taylor. Uh, question for the chair. Was the agenda published in advance? Was, it, was the agenda approved at the beginning of this meeting? We don't typically do that. That's what this meeting is about, is setting up the agenda. Are you speaking against the motion to I, rearrange it? In that case, yeah. if, the, if the agenda had not been approved in advance, then it, arranging it now would be appropriate. Uh, speech in favor of reverting to the printed order. Okay. Speech against reverting to the printed order. Thank you. Yes? And when you come to the microphone, you might want to adjust the mic to yourself. If you are tall enough, you might have to pick up the microphone. Turn your back to us, speak to the audience, and, speak, and say your name for the benefit of the recording. My name's Kate Secor. Um, Pull the microphone. Sorry, better? Hi, my name is Kate Secor. Um, we're going to get through almost all of this anyway. The stuff that's been pushed to the end of the agenda is probably the stuff that many people want to speak to, so we're not going to skip it by doing it later. I think doing it in the proposed order means that we actually get to all of the other stuff as well as the stuff that has been pushed off to the end. Speech in favor of reverting to the printed agenda. A speech against. Mr. Ellingworth, those people who have sound making devices need to silence them and take them out of the room. Thank you. Um, Tim Ellingworth, I was just going to say that I, the order is random in either event, whether it's uh, the printed order or a different order, and I trust the head table to do it right. Just a moment. I will say that the order of the agenda is merely the order that they were submitted in. There was no attempt to move things around at the time that I was posting them on the web. As they came in, that's the way they went. Yes. But the order that we've changed it to is, we think, is a more logical order. That's right. We just, they're just come, they're first in, first out for the printed order. Uh, let me see. We are on a in favor of reverting to the printed order. Uh, yes, if you. you 
uh, you need to come to the microphone. It's an inquiry, presumably an inquiry. That's okay, you can make an inquiry. Hello, my name is Ari Goldstein. I just had a quick question as, as to whether or not the head table could expand a bit on how they got to the, log the order they wanted to change it to. The head table does not feel the need to engage in debate on the motion. Uh, let's see, are we are in favor of reverting to the printed order. Uh, you, sir, yes. I keep forgetting people's names and I apologize. For those of us who are trying to follow this thing, it makes it easy. Speak your name. Say your name. I'm sorry, Howard Rosenblatt. Uh, for those of us who are trying to follow these things, it makes it much easier if we're having an order and the, as they are put into the book. Um, I appreciate the fact that it may have been randomly submitted initially, but from a practical standpoint, for those of us who are trying to follow, it will avoid us from having to go back and forth and back and forth and allow us to keep our books in order. So I would prefer to go to the printed agenda. The chair would clarify it's not just that we're, we would go through the uh, agenda, not just in the, uh, for setting debate time limits, but in their actual consideration if we revert to the printed order. That would be both, uh, bo in both cases, yes. Uh, all right. Um, how much time do we have against? Uh, for going back to the printed order, we have about a minute left. One minute to, to go back to the printed order. And for keeping the order that's on the screen, we have... Um, about a minute 15. Not a, oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, those in favor of retaining the, ex the printed order, uh, is there uh, anyone speaking in, I mean, in, 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 no, in, in, I'm sorry, in, in leaving it the way it is up on the screen, sorry. Uh, a question, okay, we'll take that. Yeah, the time you're spending walking back and forth to the microphone doesn't count against your debate time. Unless you walk really, really slow. Unless you, unless you piss us off. <laughs> yeah, uh, before you speak, I do apologize. I'm not likely to see over there. You may, you may need to be a bit more demonstrative, and I apologize for that. It's hard. It, 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 we are not, I'm not far enough back to see the wings as much. Thank you. Speak. Go ahead. Yes. My name is Thomas Monahan, and my question is, would this revised schedule push E probus Hugo into tomorrow's meeting instead of today. If it uh, it is possible, the question yes, E pluribus Hugo might be considered to, might be considered tomorrow, depending on if we get through the depending on how fast we go through the items tomorrow. We set a debate time limit today, but the actual consideration. I believe Mr. Yallo's intent is for us to consider it tomorrow if we get to that point in the agenda. Is that correct, Mr. Yallo? That is the legislative intent of the motion, is to have, the, to have E Pluribus Hugo and 4 and 6 considered at tomorrow's meeting, should we reach that point, should we have enough time to do so. Okay, that was an inquiry. Yes, uh, yes, Ms. Cortai. Dara Kororti speaking in favor of the microphone. Yeah. I'm on. Is, is this the wrong microphone? The I one, hear yeah. me. Hold it closer. Okay, even closer. Dara Kororti speaking in favor of the screen order, because I was at the how to do business meeting panel yesterday, and I know that we can go as long as we need to on Sunday, as opposed to having to cut out at 12:45. By putting them last on the agenda, we know that we can actually get through it. All right. Okay, uh, speech in favor of going back to the printed order. Yes? An inquiry? Can bring, him the, bring him the mic. Uh, he, he has the, the, we have a hearing issue. Uh, Kilowatt, I'm the lead sponsor for the EPH that was up there. And I have a plane, I will have to leave here by one o'clock on Sunday. So, in order for us to debate that as long as we get it done by the 1245 meeting, then that's fine. Other than that, I have no opinion on whether we would do it on which day. But just as, a, oh. as information for them, uh, yeah. in order for me to present, I have to leave by 1 o'clock on Sunday. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, you've used up some debate time one way or the other that way. 
uh, I think you're going to have to chart. Uh, yes. Can you tell us which direction you're debating when you introduce yourself? Yes. Warren Buff debating in favor of the printed order. I believe that we don't have a strong reason to deviate from our tradition of going in the order of submission without having actually discussed it as a parliamentary body. If we choose as a body to change that order, that's fine, but I, I'd like to start with our traditional order. A speech, let me see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a, uh, to refer retaining the order on the screen. Yeah, Perry Ann Lurie. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm speak. I wanted to see how they put my name up. Sort of. <laughs> not, not good at all, but that's okay. Um, the, the reason that we would like to put those items at the end of the agenda and discuss them on Sunday is that we will then have data from this year's Hugo nominations, which we currently do not have, and it is hard to debate this in a vacuum. Any time left to speak it? Uh, they, uh, printed order has nine seconds, screen order has six seconds. The chair believes the debate time has expired. <laughs> uh, there is no debate time left. If you want to move to extend debate, you can. The chair doesn't believe you have a two-thirds ability to do so. <laughs> On the motion to revert, is there, it, sorry, no, okay, thank you. On the, motion, on the motion to revert to the printed order, all of those in favor of, refer, of reverting the agenda to the order in which it is printed in the paper documents, raise your hands. Hands down. Those in favor of sticking to the order on the screen and the slides, hands down. The negative has it, the motion fails. Now we go on. Now that settles what I thought was going to happen on the next page. That takes us to setting debate time limits. Item B12 is called the 5% solution. This would repeal the existing requirement that any uh, Hugo finalist to, uh, must get at least 5% of the votes of the nominations cast in a category to place in the bottom two positions, four, four and five. You have to have a minimum of three anyway. The chair suggests six minutes. Any other numbers? Eight. Eight? You can call it numbers. Twelve? Okay, 12, 8, 6, 4. four. Any others? Okay, we'll start with 12. All those in favor of 12 minutes, raise your hands, hands down. Uh, those opposed, hands down. Eight minutes. All those in favor of eight minutes, raise your hands, hands down. Those opposed, hands down. That doesn't pass. Six minutes. All those in favor of six minutes, hands down. Those opposed, six minutes is adopted. Item B15 is called multiple nominations. It proposes to deal with the situation when a work that is potentially eligible in multiple categories, not necessarily on the, their length, but based on their content, uh, how to deal with such things. Uh, is a question? You want to move to postpone indefinitely, maybe? Is that a, yeah? I would like to share, give us the page yes, number. Yes, 22. 22. There's a, there's a table of contents at the front that will give you the page numbers. Item B15, yes, look at your, yes. 20, item 22, page 22, or page 22 rather, B15 is moved to amend the Wisfus Constitution to eliminate the possibility of a work simultaneously appearing on the final ballot in multiple categories. All right. Uh, members do need to rise to be recognized unless they are unable to do so. Uh, yes, please come to the microphone to state, your, state what you want before we, uh, we're going to do debate time limit unless you're trying to move it, some of the adhering motions. Okay, go ahead and come to the microphone, state your name and your question, and speak to the audience. Hi, my name's Gloria McGid. My question is, um, can, I, can we get an example of something that's eligible in more than one category? Because I don't uh, know the how chair, that happens. The chair regrets to inform you that that actually is debate on the substance of the motion. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Very well. Uh, believe it or not, it is. <laughs> 
All right, the chair proposes eight minutes of debate time. In six, four, There's a ten. Ten. Okay, those in favor of, the first was ten. No, I heard ten. All those in favor of ten minutes, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, eight minutes. All in favor? Hands down, those opposed. Think the negative has that. Six minutes, those in favor? Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, six minutes has it. Item B16, which is on page 24, or 23? 23. Oh, yes, sorry. Uh, yes, sorry. That is moved to amend the WSFIS Constitution for the purpose of encouraging the diversity of Hugo Award nominations by excluding more than two works within a category that are part of the same dramatic series or have a common co-author. Right. That's a diversity called nominee diversity on uh, item B16, page 23. The chair proposes 10 minutes. Okay, hang on a second. Uh, 10. 12 and a 16. Did I hear a 16? Okay, so 16. Hang on, let's slow down here. Get the, the, the deputy's catching these for me. 16, 12, 10, 8, 6. 16, 12, 10, 8, and 6. Okay, let's try with, let's see. 16 minutes. Those in favor, hands up. Down. Those opposed. Thank you. What's next? 12? All in favor, 12 minutes. Raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed. Hands down. 10 minutes. All, all in favor. Hands down. Those opposed. That's adopted. 10 minutes. Item B17 is page 24. Thank you. This is moved to amend the WSFIS Constitution to make the eligibility time window for any of the specific work categories uh, to be two years rather than one year and to eliminate the current automatic extension of eligibility of works originally published outside the USA. Yes, for what purpose does the member rise? Uh, yes, it's Kate Secor, right? Uh, Ms. Secor has moved to postpone the motion indefinitely. Is there a second? Second. This motion is debatable. Ms. Secor is the maker of the motion. You have up to two minutes to explain why, you sh why we should not consider this motion. Hello, my name is Kate Secor. Um, I think that we should not be considering this uh, this year. I think that extending eligibility for works is harmful to the works that are published in the year. We have so much stuff coming out every year. Giving people two years of eligibility just means that in the second year, there's twice as much stuff. And in the third year, there's twice as much stuff. This is the award for the best of this year. Changing it to the best of this year and last year means that the field is bigger and worthy nominees are, in fact, less likely to rise to the top of the crop. A speech, op um, that's a speech opposed to the consideration of the motion, a speech in favor of the consideration of the motion. Yes, sir. Yes, come to the mic. Speak, give your name and speak to the audience. My name is Jack Foy. Uh, I'm speaking in favor of uh, considering this motion. Uh, closer? Yeah, you can pull it out. All right. Yes. Better? better? Okay. Um, I believe that uh, uh, the breadth of the field actually does encourage uh, uh, us discovering works over time and that a year, honestly, especially with stuff uh, uh, published towards the end of the year, uh, is a fairly short window for us to find the stuff that we actually think is good. Speech opposed to the, con uh, yes, a speech opposed to the consideration of the motion? Yes? No in, no, in the back. Green, in, yeah, green you, in the green, yes, thank you. You can take the microphone out of its stand and uh, hold, it up to your, hold it up and speak to the audience and give your name. Uh, Morris Keeson. Um, Close, hold the microphone closer to your mouth. K-E-E-S-A-N. Uh, regardless of the merits of this particular motion, I think we've got enough proposed changes to the Hugos at this moment to consider this year that this motion, regardless of uh, this uh, uh, proposed amendment, regardless of its merits, would be better addressed in a later year, not this year. A speech in uh, favor of its consideration, yes. Uh, Andrew Adams, uh, the 
it would be useful motion, I think, to refer to committee. In order to do that, we have to consider the motion so that we can refer it to committee to report back next year. So therefore, I'm in favour of considering this motion uh, at the main meeting so that we can refer it to a committee for report in later years. A speech in favour of consideration. A uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, opposed to consideration. I apologize. Uh, uh, Mr. Yellow. Were you trying? Were you trying to get recognition back there? Okay. Everyone is in that same line. The number of works that come out in each year does not decrease if we spend two years thinking about it. If you're behind on your reading, you're still going to be more behind on your reading. I certainly know that I am. <laughs> Let's see, that was opposed. In favor of consideration, yes. Can I get your name? Gloria McGee. Hand her, her, her Thank you. Hi. Um, I think we should consider this because. Sorry, give your name. Please. Oh, I'm sorry. Gloria McGid again. Um, I think that we should consider this because there are a lot of works that are initially being self published um, and have very small distribution that are picked up by a publisher later. Perfect example is Andy Weir's The Martian, which I would have liked to have seen on a ballot because I really like that book. So I think expanding the time frame would make allowances for cases like that. All right, that was in favor of consideration. Those opposed to consideration, um, yeah, Mr. Glazer. He didn't show me his name. He showed me his whole pass. <laughs> Glenn Glazer. I would simply like to address um, Dr. Adams' point about committee. Uh, there isn't anything sacrosanct about a committee appointed by um, the business meeting. People can form committees on their own. They can org self-organize and report back. Um, I don't think that the going through the formal process um, that he outlined is really at all necessary. I do agree that this should be taken to a different year, as Mr. Keeson said, for the reasons he said. That's opposed to consideration. Anyone in favor? An inquiry? An inquiry? How do we have two minutes of debate for either side of that? It started at two on each side. Yeah, you only, the clock starts when you start talking and stops when you step away from the microphone. The time walking back and forth doesn't count. It's too big a room. We'd use up all the time just in moving back and forth. That's how. There's, a, there's, a, about le there's less than a minute left in each side just from their talking. There's 10 seconds left for ten, not considering the motion. Ten, uh, where are we at? In favor of consideration? Uh, no. Or yes, as in, favor. in favor, how much? Uh, we got about uh, 45 seconds. Less than 45 seconds. Let's have one more, one more in favor of consideration and try and call it. Call it uh, you're in favor of consideration. Let's, let's see if we can finish this off. We're, we're repeating ourselves. Almost not in order, actually. But. I know who you are. <laughs> I'm Hank Graham. I think this is a major change. I think the transition is going to be painful. I think it's worth doing. I think it's time to change how we're doing it because I think it will fit the way the situation is now because of things like the Martian. Is there any objection to closing debate at this time? No. Thank you. <laughs> On the motion to postpone indefinitely, a two-thirds vote against consideration being required. All those in favor of considering item B17, two years eligibility, raise your hands. All those in favor of considering it, if you, if you want to consider it, raise your hands. Hands down. Those who are opposed to consideration and want to kill it now. Hands down. There being more than there being two thirds in the uh, for, in the negative, the motion to postpone indefinitely passes. The uh, measure is killed and will not appear on the main meeting agenda. <laughs> question, question, question. Member will come to the microphone and state their question of privilege. Tom Galloway, 
Would it be possible for people to line up here in front so we can save the walking time? It, it, it hardly, the answer is it usually doesn't work well when you try it that way. Uh, normally because by the time your spot in the queue comes up, the debate has passed you by. That's what we've discovered in the past. Thing. I'd rather not try. I know it slows things down. For what? Parliamentary inquiry. Still, Andrew Adams, uh, I, I would like to request the uh, top table to explain the um, process whereby somebody who was at this meeting could request a reconsideration of the decision that's just been made. Uh, anybody who voted in fa uh, anybody who voted to postpone indefinitely, the side that won, could move to reconsider the vote tomorrow. Nobody else can. Either people who voted in favor of consideration or people who were not here. So it is possible to resurrect it. It's just, it, it requires somebody who just won has to do so. Thank you. Next item, uh, let me see. How are we doing for time? I think we have time. Let's, let's see if we can get through these last two. Uh, next is B13, best series. Page 10. Uh, this is moved to amend the Wisconsin Constitution to change the written fiction Hugo Award categories by adding uh, by, by creating a best series award and correcting related references to existing Hugo Award categories. Yes, Ms. Lurie. Doctor. Dr. Lurie, I'm sorry. I'll Dr. Lurie. Thank you. Uh, I move to postpone indefinitely. Is there a second? All right, Ms. Lurie is the maker of the motion. Doctor. Dr. Lurie. <laughs> Dr. Lurie, as the maker of the motion, you get preference in, spe in speaking against consideration. Uh, again, as Mr. Keeson said earlier, we have enough Hugo stuff to deal with at this meeting, and I think this is not the time to take this up. Speech in favor of considering best series. Yes, Mr. Buff. Warren Buff, maker of the best series motion. I am, in, of course, in favor of considering a motion I made. <laughs> However, I believe that it would bring our Hugo categories more in line with the way publishing works these days. While we nominate a fair number of works and series, they don't tend to actually do very well as best novel. We tend to have a certain modicum of support that can get them nominated but they just don't stand alone very well as novels when compared against other standalone novels or even first entries in series. I, I think that allowing us to consider fiction in the form it's actually written and published would be an improvement for the Hugos, and thus I am in favor of considering the motion. Speech opposed, uh, Mr. Lorenz. My name is John Lorenz. Uh, speaking as somebody who's had some experience in, in administering Hugo's over the years, I can tell you that looking at this proposal, this would be horrendous to try to deal with the eligibility problems and trying to figure out what fits into what category and when, when something new is newly eligible in a series. Speech in favor of considering the series, Hugo? Sir. Thomas Monahan. The reason this needs to be discussed is this. there's a question about why a Hugo goes to bo last book of a series and causing all the rest of them to be ignored, or why should that book get the Hugo while the series itself deserves a Hugo? This needs to be discussed and just ignoring it for another year and postponing it is not a good idea. Thank you. Speech opposed to consideration, yes. Yes. Ms. Neal. I'm Terry Neal. Um, I saw this proposal morph a lot online, and I don't think there's been enough time to actually hammer out all of the details, and I think that the people who proposed it could use another year to refine with input from people online, and we should not be doing that today 
this year in the business meeting. Any further substantive debate on this? Parliamentary, parliamentary in member will come and state their parliamentary inquiry. Howard Rosenblatt, uh, am I not correct that considering this year would only mean that we get to vote again a year from now as opposed to considering this year making it happen? That's correct. Anything that passes this year will be sent to next year's Worldcon for ratification. So it doesn't pass. It doesn't it, become effective. It doesn't become effective it, 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 this year. It would have to be ratified next year before it took effect. Right, so there would be an additional there year. There would be an additional year of discussion, correct, yes. Any, is there any reason, any, any further substantive debate, or can we bring this to a vote? You want to speak to it? Uh, which, which side, in favor of consideration? Okay, got some time left. 20 seconds. 20 seconds remain. <laughs> Hi, my name is Derek Freeland. Uh, this is my first uh, Worldcon convention, I think. Uh, I think um, <clears throat> I'm in favor of this, uh, sorting this out as soon as we can, because I, if, I think if we want people to be engaged, new people to be engaged, um, I found that some of the books I... Uh, yeah, I apologize. Time in favor of debate. Yes, you do need to get your name to the secretary, please. Go ahead and put that in. Okay. That's okay. Yes. Uh, speech, uh, any, can we bring this to a vote? Thank you. On the question of consideration, a two-thirds vote against consideration being necessary to suppress this. All those who believe we should consider the best series proposal, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed to its consideration. Oh, yeah. I, I'm afraid we're going to have to count it. I, I, the chair thinks there's probably two-thirds on that, but I think we're going to need to count it, and we do probably need the practice anyway. <laughs> yes. Famous last words. Very well. The question is, shall the motion be considered a two-thirds vote against being necessary? All those in favor of considering the motion will please rise. Anybody up here? In that case, we'll start with you. In favor of consideration? Oh, yes, sir. We'll start with one, and we go down to the end here. Uh, do you want us to? Oh, you I didn't see it. You stood up. I didn't see it. Okay, then two, and then three. Two, three. Three. Four. Five. Six. Uh, where are we at? Let's see here. Where are we at? That's right. We want to go across, folks. Yes. Oh, right. He's right. Yes. Because of the three sections, we need to go each do each okay. section, or we'll lose, we'll lose complete track. Where were we? Let's start in the back and move forward. How's that? Oh, that's right. It won't work. It won't work. The people behind won't see them. Go ahead and count. Where were you? Where were you? you were 14? 14. 14. Sit down. Let's come to the front. It, yeah, that's right. It won't work. Other way. 16 is your number. Your number 16. Harry? Is Bill, is Bill, is Bill 47. 47, I think. Thank you. Let's come to the front and do the last section. Let's do the front and go to the next section, please. There are uh, seven, whoops, Hold sorry, in the back, sorry. There are 73 in the... There's one missing on the side. 
Yes? In favor? 74. There are 74 in the affirmative. Where'd we get a, there was a 75th? Okay, hang on a moment here. Hang on a moment before I, before I continue. There are currently 75 in the affirmative. Is there anyone who, do, who, was not, who does not think they were counted? Folks, you, those of you in the back, I really think you were really hard to see back there. Okay, if we were using the standing room section, we'd be doing a physical division, and the chair is going to ask that, those, that you come further forward so the sergeants at arms, then there are seats up here, if you can, and that would be a lot easier on us. Bring the chairs with you. If you want to bring your chairs, go ahead, all right? All right. Those who are, okay, there are chairs up here, lots of spaces. Fill them in if you can, all right. Very well then. Those opposed to the consideration of the question will please rise, and we will start again over here. We'll do the sections to the back, then the middle, then the right, from my point of view. Quiet, please. You've missed people on that row. You've missed people on this row. So 36. Hold, hold the count at 36, please. The chair is going to observe. Those of you standing along the wings of the room will never be counted unless you sing out. You, 37, then. Yes, you are never going to. Do not stand up around there. Go have a seat, Mr. Bog. Thank you. Okay, we are at 37. Thank you. One oh one, hold the count at one oh one, please. Mr. Miller. One oh two. One oh three. One oh six. One oh seven. One oh eight. One oh nine. One ten. One eleven. Twelve. One thirteen. One fourteen. One fifteen. One sixteen. One seventeen. One eighteen. One nineteen. Are there any other people wishing to vote? Hearing none, the vote is 75 in the affirmative and 125 in the negative. There being less than two-thirds in the, in the negative, the motion to postpone indefinitely fails. The motion will be on the main agenda. To Question to the tech team, do we have enough time? Or do we need to take a break now, or are we, are we, can we go on to the, do that last one on that page? We do, need a, we, do, we, we, we do need a technical timeout at this moment. This meeting is in recess for two minutes. If there is, uh, let's see, it's 11.12 and the meeting will return to order. Yes, I apologize to the head table staff for uh, breaking your ears, but the sound has to travel to the back of the room. Thank you. When we recessed, we were setting the debate time for best series. The chair suggested 16 minutes. Okay, hang on a moment, wait. Slowly here, we have 20 and 16 and 12 and 10. I think I heard eight. And 24. 
Is there, did I, was there a four there somewhere? So is, are, uh, is that what you were suggesting? Four. Okay, thank you. Okay. What, did, was I correct that 24 was the suggestion? Thank you. Any others? We have 24. 20, yeah, go ahead. 24, 20, 16, 12, 10, 8, and 4. 24. All those in favor of 24, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed. That is not adopted. 20. 20 all those in favor, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed. That one's not adopted. No. 16. 16. Those in favor, 16, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed. The negative appears to have it. That does not adopt it. 12. 12. Those in favor, 12. Hands down. Those oppo uh, opposed. The affirmative has it. That's adopted. 12 minutes for best series. Next is item B18, which is on page 25. Moved to amend section 4.4 of the WISFUS Constitution to authorize WorldCons to accept ballots with any form of signature or authentication legal in the jurisdiction of the administering WorldCon. Um, a motion on this? Uh, come to the come, go ahead and come up in it. Ms. Secor has an amendment by substitution. Hi, everybody. I'm still Kate Secor. Uh, I have a motion to amend by substitution to replace the currently mooted section of 4.4.2 with language to the effect of administering World Con shall provide the option to receive only the site selection ballot and associated paraphernalia on paper even if they have otherwise selected electronic publications. Yikes. The member will please bring their uh, wording up and I believe we're going to need that and that's really hard to parse honestly. Hang on. Uh, I do understand that, but uh, could the, I think the, I think I have to ask the parliamentarian if he could type that up so we could all see it. And I know that's quick here. Um, and then I need it. And then the secretary I will know. need it there afterwards, and then we'll let the, the debate on. Is there a second to the motion to amend? Thank you. Okay. Th all right, thank you. We'll get this typed up, and I apologize for that, but we're... Uh, You're wanting to change the wording that would replace section 4.4.2. Thank you. When he's typed it up, he'll expand it so that you can see it. Give him a moment to write it. It's, uh, it's a difficult one. In Ms. Secor, you want to work with the, uh, make sure he's getting it right here. A question? You know, go ahead and come. Go ahead. We might as well. Uh, uh, the member has the, another member has the floor. Jameson Quinn, parliamentary inquiry. Would yes? this be something that could be dealt with by the fly specking committee? No. no. It, well, you can't refer it to report, report back next year, and I'll tell you right now that the nitpicking fly specking committee is too busy to deal with it right now. Thank you. Because most of the members of it are sitting up here. All right. Uh, another inquiry, uh, who's first? Ron, maybe? Can, yeah, Mr. Oaks, and then, okay, let's see. Uh, see, there are too many heads in the way. Uh, parliamentary inquiry. Yes. Uh, since there's been a motion to amend, does that uh, override any attempts to, for a motion to postpone indefinitely? Yes, as a matter of fact, the motion to postpone indefinitely yields to the motion to amend. However, once the motion to amend is out of the way, it would be in order again to postpone indefinitely. I. I think I actually had someone in the back earlier. Were you still, were you still trying to get, yeah. Uh, I'd like to remind members that you do not have the ability to gain preference and recognition by remaining standing even if someone else. You really need to sit down if you haven't been recognized. Yeah, no, okay, thank you. Yes, I did. During the last break, I got it. See, My name is John McDonald. And if you could speak to the audience in the microphone, please. Okay. Uh, make, a make a recommendation that this time, while we're dealing with the administrative stuff, that we take a short recess break? The chair is intending to take a recess, if we possibly can, after the next page of the agenda. There's two items after that. The chair needs that break as well, okay? <laughs> All right. Do we have the item before us? Yes. Motion to amend by substitution. This would replace the wording in section 4.4.2, and there is a second to it. 
Uh, does the member wish to speak to it? Or I believe you may be actually... You have a parliamentary inquiry. Oh, I need the paper back down here so the secretary can get the wording. Just, I will in a moment, yes. Yes, it is, the, the parliamentarian has observed. Why, well, in fact, I'm going to ask the parliamentarian to make this. That's uh, part of it. Okay, Miss, it believes this, that the parliamentarian thinks it has a major effect. Yeah, you, people will note that this amendment by substitution completely uh, changes the effect of the motion and no longer has anything to do with signatures. Uh, it rather uh, provides this particular option. Uh, as stated in the substitution, and that is the intent of the mover of the amendment. Okay. Ms. Secor, if you could explain. I, I have a parliamentary inquiry. Would, Dr. Lurie, would you state your parliamentary inquiry? So, so is it... Is if it, you could it, turn around and face the audience, so, please. So is it... I'm still Perry Ann Lurie, which you are not spelling correctly. Dr. Lurie. Dr. Perry Ann Lurie. He, he actually got it right this time. Uh, if the amendment by substitution has nothing whatsoever to do with the original proposal, is that still in order? I believe the member may be raising a point of order that the amendment is not germane. I, unfortunately, the member's parliament, I'm not going to take the parliamentary inquiry until I've ruled on the, on the point of order. The chair, rules, the chair rules on the point of order that although the motion is antithetical to the spirit of the original motion, it is on the same subject and therefore it is germane. The member had, I heard a parliamentary inquiry. Uh, yes, so Ms. Cortai will come and give us the parliamentary inquiry, please. Can I have that chair? Where's tea? I apologize, Dara. Dara Koroti, Parliamentary Inquiry. Can the text of the amendment also be put on the other screen so those of us on the, that side of the room can actually read it? Uh, it cannot be because of the CART interpretation. Can, you, re can you read I'm going the amendment to. so that I was it can intending be on to if screen. we ever get to it, okay. <laughs> but I'm having to deal with all these parliamentary inquiries. Dr. Lurie, you have another parliamentary inquiry. Thank you. I wish to appeal the ruling of the chair. All right. Is there a second to the appeal? Second. All right. The question is on the appeal. Appeals are an unusual object. They are something the chair is allowed to debate. <laughs> the process for the appeal. And we have not established any debate time on, on how long the appeal should be. And therefore, therefore, it will stay within the originally suggested time limit of the motion of 12 minutes until we do something else with it. <laughs> All right. The way an appeal is handled is that the chairman who made, who made the original ruling, I will state my opinion. Those who wish to speak against why that ruling is correct and why the motion is germane, then those in favor and so on, you only get one chance to speak, but the chair does get to close and gets a second and final chance to speak on the motion. Is there any question on that procedure? Yeah. The question is, is the motion to amend by substitution with an antithetical pro uh, procedure, is it, is it germane? That is, is it an allowed amendment? While it is not in order to simply invert something, to say, such, such as to say if we were moving to approve, it would not be in order to amend by saying not approve. That simply turns it upside down. Having a motion that is antithetical to the original process, uh, original intent of the motion is in order. As an example, if we were adopting a motion to praise somebody for doing something, to endorse somebody, and somebody moved to strike out endorse and insert censure, which obviously turns the motion on its head, it would be legal. And therefore the chair believes that the motion is germane on account of it, although it is antithetical to the original purpose, it is within the scope of the subject. 
Next question, uh, okay, that's, that's the end of my opening statement. Uh, the question, the next speaker is people who wish to speak against who think the motion is not germane. Dr. Lurie, as the maker of the meal, you get the first chance. Thank you, I'm still Perry Ann Lurie. Um, doctor, I'm still Dr. Perry Ann Lurie, yes. Um, it is, it is not germane because it has nothing to do with electronic signatures. It has to do with providing paper copies of things to members, which may or may not be good, but it has nothing to do with signatures. And so it is not germane to the issue at hand. Let me see here. Uh, yeah. Who do you think was first? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Did Mr. McCarty, in, who believes the motion is germane, that speech is in... in speaking in favor of the chair's ruling. My name is Dave McCarty. Um, the electronic signature issue is specifically an issue about site selection. That's where it's coming from and that's what it's about. So dealing with handling, uh, sending out site selection paper on request is absolutely germane to the subject. Speech uh, opposed to the germaneness. Uh, was there anybody in the wings? I was trying, um, Mr. Kaysen. It's a speech opposed to the chair's ruling. And I need his name. Morris, put your badge up here for a moment so she can get it from. Yeah, I don't it's easier. Just read it. Morris Keeson, even though uh, the amendment and the original motion are both about site selection, this is no more germane than would be a motion to amend EPH by saying, let's have a YA Hugo. They're both about Hugos, but they're unrelated. They're not germane. This is equally ungermane. Uh, let me see. Yes, in favor of the chair's ruling. Hi, everybody. I am continue to be Kate Secor. This is actually about signature delivery mechanisms. And the question is, electronic, electronic signature delivery versus paper signature delivery. Um, I believe at this time that discussing methods of signature delivery is germane one each to the other. Okay, um, on the far end, yes, you, yes. Uh, Jack Foy, uh, the motion as uh, currently uh, stated in the amendment, uh, I believe uh, completely overrides uh, the original intent of the original motion, although the, the substituted motion it may stand well on its own rights. It, it uh, just doesn't, uh, it doesn't dovetail with the intent of the original, uh, originally stated motion. Mr. Yellow. I For the germaneness criteria to be met, it is merely required that this affect the same subject matter. It does not require anything that it is in favor or closely affects, it merely has to pertain to the same general subject matter. The original motion for electronic signatures refers to one mechanism for providing signatures. The original substitution that, as Kate said, makes it a different way of getting signatures and therefore, since they both refer to signatures, it's clearly germane. Um, opposed to the chair's ruling, and you can't speak twice to it. Yes. Hi, I'm Chris Garib. This is my first Worldcon business meeting. Uh, uh, and Mr. Hold chair, a, hold for a moment. I'm going to ask people, by the way, when you, especially the first time you come up, you may want to come by either before or after your speech and, and show your badge to the chair. I will, because you'll have a hard time spelling okay. my name. Uh, continue, continue, please. Uh, again, I'm not familiar with business meetings, but in general, I would suggest to the chair that this would have been better suited to be discussed after, as part of the debate on the general amendment as opposed to right now while we're trying to set an agenda. Do it, do it later when we're, we're talking about the thing versus try to do it now while we're trying to set everything else up. Mr. Rosenblatt.
And before you speak, those of you standing around in the back of the room will never be recognized, just so you understand that. Thank you. Howard Rosenblatt, Robert's Rules of Order, page 136. It is germane. I will hand this to the chair, so I'll save the time copy. for reading it. I've got a copy. That's his speech. Uh, the chair hears a motion to, to, for the previous question to close debate on the, mo on the appeal. Second. Is there any, if the chair is required to add a show of hands of anyone else who wishes to debate the appeal. Um, is there any, anyone else want to debate the appeal? No. Hands. Uh, would the member be prepared to, with, to, to withhold their moment just long enough for the chair to close? I think the members have made the point, made their points appropriately in favor of the appeal. It's not actually opposed by Roberts. And in fact, one of the purposes of the preliminary business meeting is to decide not just how long we're going to speak, but what we're going to be speaking about at the main meeting, and therefore it is within the scope. That ends the debate. All those who believe it a, a, a negative majority, that is a majority opposed to the ruling of the chair, is necessary to overturn the ruling of the chair. The chair's ruling is that the amendment on the screen is germane. Excuse me? Can't we read the, read the, read the, read the okay, this is not a vote on the amendment. All right. Very well. Okay. There, very well. There is a motion to amend the proposed original constitutional amendment. To amend by substitution, by substituting for section 442, Administering Worldcons shall provide the option to receive only the site selection ballot and associated paraphernalia on paper, even if they have otherwise selected electronic publications. The chair ruled that this motion was germane to the original proposal. That was appealed. The question is, was this a motion to amend by substitution germane? All those who believe the motion was germane, raise your hands. Hands down. Those who do not believe it was germane, raise your hands. Hands down. There being less than a majority in the negative, the chair's ruling is sustained. The motion is germane. How much debate time total remains? Uh, from the 12... For, ov overall, from the 12 minutes. Uh, we have um, 7 minutes and 45 seconds. Just under 8 minutes remain. The question is on the amendment, and uh, Ms. Secor gets the, uh, for what purpose, are members right, the member who made the motion gets preference and recognition in favor of discussing why we should do the amendment. Thank Please you. hold two seconds for the timekeeper time to reorganize to right the math. Oh yes, that's right, yes, the mo right. amendments get five minutes by themselves and it comes out of the main list. So this is a five minute debate on the amendment. Okay, that's easier than what I was about to do. <laughs> I am waiting for the timekeeper go. Uh, the question, by the way, the question here is on, on the amendment by substitution. The, Ms. Secor is actually speaking in favor of the amendment by substitution. Those of you speaking against are speaking, in, in, uh, speaking for the original wording. For what purpose does the member rise? The uh, sec I'm not going to, you, you, the member who made the original motion gets preference in speaking in favor of it. Um, Kevin, five minutes, five minutes total. All right, thank you. Ms. Secor, in favor of the substitute version. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Kate Secor. I looked at this motion and I thought, you know, electronic signatures are actually a great idea. We sign everything electronically these days. And then I talked to a bunch of people who have been involved in site selection, and they have really serious technical qualms about how that's done. And I was like, well, okay, what's the problem? And there are security concerns and there are other stuff. And I'm like, but I don't have anything on paper. I don't have anything on paper. I get, I get electronic publications, like paper. What's this paper thing? There's no way for me to get a straight up paper site selection ballot. I have no other way of giving you my signature before the convention if we don't have electronic, electronic signatures. And I realized that this gives us a way to let people who would otherwise be using the electronic signature system a ballot that they can sign on paper and return on paper. And that satisfies the needs of, I think, both people that want this to be easier for people who are not paper-based and people who want it to continue to be as secure and as simple as the system that we currently have. I understand that the wording on this is really terrible. 
I get that, and it is my intent if we decide to make this the thing that we are debating, to ask us to then take it to a committee to report back with better language tomorrow at the time of the full debate. Um, Ms. Secor, if a moment please. Because of our rules, a, a member is not actually allowed to refer a motion to committee immediately upon speaking, and, and particularly because no one's spoken against the proposal. I believe I said uh, let me like finish. Okay. Let me get to the end of the sentence. <laughs> Convoluted as it was. However, it would be in order for anybody to move to refer the whole matter to a committee to report back tomorrow after we've had one speech against. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Speech against, and boy, we got a lot of people speaking against. Did you have any idea? Well, Glenn was standing, but I think you have a point of... Uh, original, oh, is off of the original motion, you have preference in speaking, uh, speaking on, uh, on it. Yeah, so this is opposed to the substitution and in favor of the original. My name is Terry Neal, and I wrote the um, original, which is also not well-worded. Um, and my intent was to allow either paper or at least one form of electronic signature. And I agree with Ms. Sikor um, that we need to allow both, and that is the intention, and I have no objection to referring to this committee if that is what we decide to do. Uh, where'd Ms. Secor go? Yes. Ms. Secor, would you be wanting to move this, to refer this matter to a committee to report back tomorrow? Yes, please, sure. Is there a second? Is there any objection to doing so? Uh, there are objections to it. Very well. This is a debatable motion. How much time? Uh, it comes out of the debate time limit, so, for the, for the, on the motion to amend. So the, the, debate, the debate time limit's on the motion to amend. Okay. Uh, would somebody in favor of referring it to committee want to speak briefly? Ms. Secor is the maker of the motion. You have preference. Yes. Hello, everybody. Given that both the maker of the amendment and the maker of the original motion have agreed that maybe a committee would be great and there are language issues in both versions to hammer out, I think moving this to committee and coming back tomorrow with something that can be debated on the original timetable would be a useful thing because then we can actually debate on something that's got useful language. Like right now, I think both of them would need to be talked about more extensively than if the language was better written. Uh, I'd like a speech against, and Mr. Kowalczyk, speech against referring to committee. Um, uh, speaker, yes? Uh, is it in order to call the question? No. Not until he's had one chance to speak against it. The question was, do, the question was is it in order to end debate? It is not in order to, to uh, move to call the question until but one, one speaker from each side has had a chance at it. Mr. Stanley has made a big deal of the preliminary business meeting. Some of us have a, are very busy at this convention and do not have time to deal with committees. We've made the effort to come to this preliminary business meeting, and I think we should be given a chance to explain why we think this is a very bad idea now. Okay, that's one in favor. Is there a motion? I hear a motion to the... Uh, there's a mo mo it's been moved and seconded to end the debate on the motion to refer. That takes a two-thirds vote. All those in favor... To call the question, yeah. It, just, just asking to call the question doesn't end the debate. You still have to vote to end the debate. All right. Yes, a question? So we would be voting to stop On the motion to amend. I mean to refer, rather, sorry. Again, on the motion to refer to committee. Yes, this is only on shall we end the debate on the motion to refer to committee. That's, that's the only question. All those in favor of ending the debate on... A point of order. Oh, yes. Yeah, is there anyone else who wishes to debate the motion to refer to committee? Is there any objection to ending the debate on the motion to refer? All those in favor of referring the motion to committee, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed, raise your hands. The affirmative has it. The motion is referred to a committee. The committee consists of Ms. Secor, Ms. Ne uh, Ms. Neal. I keep wanting to say O'Neal. I apologize. Sorry. Ms. Neal. Uh, are, who else wants to be on this committee? Uh, the parliamentarian, uh, Mr. Illingworth. Who else? Oh, yeah, Ms. And, and Dave McCarty. And I think that's enough. Dave McCarty. All right. The, me, the, the members of that committee are enjoined to, or, or enjoined, are, or are instructed, 
in, instructed to meet after this meeting is over, come up with stuff, and you need to get it to the secretary as soon as possible. You can do that by emailing wispus-business at sasquam.org. Is there a question in the back? Uh, you, quiet, I have to restate the question. Mr. Uh, Mr. Farr... If the members want to talk to Mr. Farr, who's administered head of administration, to, to go ahead and meet with him. Anyone else who's still interested in it need to, need to bug the committee chairs about it, all right? Um, yeah, question of privilege? Yeah. An adjournment? Is that what you're trying to say? Is that yours? Yeah, I, I think Mr. Glazer had... I, I was trying to get the other stuff out of the way, and I, yes, I understand. Go on. Mr. Glazer... Glenn Glazer, I have a point of personal privilege uh, for the chair. I would like to know if the cart uh, transcription up there is ephemeral or if it is being stored. And if it is being stored, is there an intent to publish? I don't believe it's being stored, is it? Uh, would, the, would the cart transcription is something you can give to the business meeting at the conclusion of the business meetings? No, by the end of the weekend, by our last meeting. By next week. By next week. Oh, yeah, next week. That's fine. Then we, yeah. If you can give it to our, our group, that would be good. Thank you. All right. <laughs> A question of privilege? Yes. By the way, for those of you wanting to raise questions of privilege, the chairman is attempting to try and get us into a recess. Thank you. Go on. <laughs> Very quick. So, Kilowatt, just the interpreters are having trouble keeping up with the voting. And so we may need to pause just a little bit, you know, okay, before we say who in favor, who opposed, so that she can actually say which one we're voting for. When All right. Otherwise, we can't tell which one we're voting for. Okay, Thank you. Yes, we'll try and slow down. The chair would really, really like to, to recess the meeting at this time. Are there real... Is there... No, because we're going to have to... For what purpose does the member rise? If you're trying to move to recess, you don't have to, you know. You cannot. The motion is no longer on the floor. It's been sent to a committee. The question, the member attempted to make an amendment. The member is, appo the member is appointed to the committee right now. <laughs> Mr. Caswell, Mr. Caswell, you brought it upon yourself. <laughs> if there is no objection, we will, we will be in recess for at least 10 minutes. Hearing none, this meeting is in recess until at least 11.50. It is 11.54 and the meeting will return to order. Yes, I'm sorry. It wakes no, you up? I was up? just asleep. Yes, you were asleep, <laughs> yes. I have had a number of requests. The next items on the agenda are the ti debate time limits and potentially postponed indefinitely on items B11 and B14E Pluribus Hugo. I have had a number of requests to, uh, t to, to take the Mark Protection Committee report and the nominations for the MPC next. Uh, that, would, that would suspend the agenda we have there. Is, uh, would, would the members be prepared to accept that? Okay, I'll take the motion then. On the mo there's a, is there a second to the motion to move, move that forward? Thank you. I'd rather not debate it. Do we really need to? Okay, those in favor of jumping forward to the next item, which is the MPC report and nominations to the MPC, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. The chair believes the negative has it. All right. Yeah, well... Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, the member does, if, uh, there's not going to be any debate upon it, and members who might want to be here or to accept their nominations, uh, you have an hour after the meeting to, sub to submit a motion or, or, take a, or perhaps take a piece of paper and fill it out now if you think you're going to be nominated and turn it in. You can accept nomination before you're nominated. <laughs> We've had several people do so, actually. So. Very well, we are now on B11, 4 and 6. And we get to the right page. That it's page 9 in your printed agenda. 
moved to amend the WSFIS Constitution to reduce the number of nominations each member can make in each category. <laughs> to increase, uh, members cannot gain the recognition until the motion's actually on the floor, thank you. Uh, move to amend the WSFIS Constitution to reduce the number of nominations each member can make in each category, to increase the number of finalists appearing on the final ballot, and to correct related references to the number of nominations per member. Mr. Bloom. Mr. Chairman, I move to postpone indefinitely. It, moved, it has been, Mr. Bloom has moved to postpone the motion indefinitely. Is there a second? second. Okay. Uh, there is, um, well, in the absence of, in, there's 10 minutes debate time by default in this one. Mark, on the question to postpone indefinitely. May I suggest Oh, four, sorry, four minutes. I'm sorry, four, four minutes. minutes. I'm sorry, I forgot. Four minutes on the postpone indefinitely. Sorry. Mr. Bloom is the maker of the motion in why we should postpone it indefinitely. Mr. Chairman, I believe that this is a genuine case in actually two of these proposed amendments where it would be premature of us to begin debate because we don't have the information necessary to decide whether this is a problem or what kind of a problem it is or how much of a problem it is or whether it's going to affect more than one year because we only have a single data point and we don't get that data point until midnight on, sa on Saturday night. Therefore, I think we should wait until much later. Um, and the only way we can do that is to postpone it to, until next year if it's still needed. And it may or may not still be needed. A speech in favor of consideration, Dr. Lurie. See, I got it right eventually. You got it right a couple of times. Um, I think we all know this is a big problem. Um, I don't know what the right answer is. But if we don't do anything this year, we've got three years of this problem instead of two. So I think we should uh, you know, debate these things this year. If we enact one or both of them, I'm good with that. We'll have some data. Uh, and next year, we have to ratify it anyway. So we'll have even more data. I would also like to suggest, if it is in order, that the business meeting ask next year's Hugo administrators to release the nomination data shortly after the close of final voting, rather than waiting until midnight after the total votes are out. Thank you. Dr. Lurie has su uh, suggested that you look ahead in the agenda. There's a motion to do that in the resolutions. A speech opposed to consideration, members who rise will be given preference. Sir, particularly if you're in the wings, I have so much trouble seeing you. I apologize, my assistants are here are trying to help. Okay. Jack William Bell. Um, I lean against making any changes to the Hugo voting process at this time. I realize that that does extend out the possible pain, but I also think that a lot of this happened because we didn't step up and nominate. So what I would like to do is urge everyone to nominate next year, and let's wait until we get a little bit more time and a little bit more information before we make these kinds of changes. Okay, that was against consideration in favor. I thought it was Tim, but yeah, yeah. Mr. Illingworth. Tim Illingworth, I recognize the sincerity of the uh, people who want to postpone indefinitely here, but I think it is a problem. We should talk about it. We shouldn't necessarily pass it. These may not be the solutions that we want, but we should look and see what we might want to do. And more debate here will make for a... If we need a different thing next year, debating here will be helpful. Thank you. Speech opposed to consideration, Mr. Galloway. And, uh, yeah, okay, thank you. Tom Galloway. I actually do believe we need to produce something this year. This, however, is not it. It took me three minutes to figure out how to completely game this and make it not work. If you think about it, um, or if you want to talk to me about how, you can. But I think it's not a workable proposal. In favor of consideration, Mr. Buff. Warren Buff. While I do believe that knee-jerk reactions to this year's nominations would be inappropriate, I think that this proposal also addresses a psychological barrier that some folks feel towards nominations by separating the number of names you list on your nominating ballot and the number on the final voting ballot, and therefore would encourage people to nominate, which I do think is something we want to do. Uh, opposed to consideration, Ms. Foster.
I'm Adrian Foster, and I'd like to say that I really don't think the problem is the system. I think it, the problem is the people who drank Fox Day's lemonade, and I think something needs to be taken care of in that direction. I think uh, collusion <laughs> should have been No, the me moment. So. The member will suspend. Is that... And, a and Mr. Yellow will I state their say. point of order. The point of the point of order. No, no. The point of order is that the uh, member's speech was uh, 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 addressing an individual uh, individual person. Uh, the chair rules the point of order well taken. Do not cast aspersions upon individuals in your speeches, no matter how you may personally feel about them. Uh, speech. Let me see. We are in favor of consideration. Which one? Yes. Hi, I'm Chris Garib. I'm the guy who wrote this. Uh, it's not a knee-jerk reaction. We have to do this all over again next year. If you read the PowerPoint, what we're suggesting, this is the same thing for the EPH, is we'll sit down in detail and explain it Saturday. If there's other ideas as how you want to do it, how, what numbers you want to change, uh, we are all ears. This is, this, is a, this is a marker in the sand to discuss a, a clear problem. Time has expired for debate. In favor of consideration, is there any reason anyone wants to speak any further? Fair enough. Uh, on the question uh, to postpone indefinitely, a two-thirds vote against consideration of four and six being necessary. All those in favor of considering item four and six, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed to the consideration, hands down there being way less than two-thirds opposed to consideration. The motion to postpone indefinitely fails. The motion will be on tomorrow on the agenda. Uh, the chair, now I actually, before I get to the debate time setting, I do want to point out the stuff at the top here. The chair has recommended that we schedule a committee of the whole, which is a, a more informal discussion of these two proposals on the agenda for not more than 30 minutes at the first break after 11 o'clock tomorrow. That would allow for consideration of the technical aspects of both these proposals, not why they should be done, but how they work. I'm guessing there's some objection to that. Is there, is there any objection to doing so? I see some objection to that. Yes. You could try so. Yeah, if the member wants to make a substitute to it. And I'll come back to the debate time limit in a moment. Mr. Bloom. Mr. Chairman, after some thought and some discussions over dinner the other night, uh, about what the real problem is, and I agree that the real problem is people rather than counting or, or ordering or otherwise changing the Hugo rules. I would like to move to amend uh, by substituting every Hugo nomination ballot shall prom prominently contain the statement, I am, familiar, I am personally familiar with each of the nominations I have made and believe each of them to be worthy of a Hugo award which must be specifically acknowledged by the nominator. The chair rules the amendment not germane. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, the amendment is germane to the same is problem the member, as is, much as it was the last time, and I will appeal your ruling. The member is appealing the ruling of the chair, okay? Is there a second to the appeal? Second. The question is on the germaneness of the amendment. This has 10 minutes involved in it because of the default involved. The uh, chair gets the first crack at it. Ready on the 10 minutes? Uh, give me where to go. There it is. Now I am. Yep. What? Is 10 minutes just for the remainder? It's 10. It, well, it's the remainder of what we've used up, actually. Whatever we've used, subtracted from the 10. We've already used some of the debate time on this, so whatever's left after the, we've used up. The chair believes that this motion is sufficiently outside the scope of the actual four and six proposal. It goes off in, a, in more of a tangent than the, it is not even directly antithetical to the exact motion and therefore it is just too far out of line and is therefore not germane. Speech, Mr. Uh, Bloom, you get to Wait. speak in favor of why it's germane. Hold on just a second. Yeah, a moment. Okay, so are you saying the postponing definite time can have a 10 minutes? Yes. Okay, okay. So we have about six minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's about six minutes total. Let remain. Mr. Chairman, I believe it is germane because it addresses the same problem in the same section of the Constitution. And ba although it, 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 it addresses it in advance rather than ex post facto, 
uh, in that it, it does not affect the way that the nominations are counted. It does affect the way the nominations are made, and it is a lesser but, but clearly different approach to what is almost certainly a problem that we cannot solve by legislation. But I do believe it is a germane way. To, 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 to consider this would be uh, to spend our time better than to consider all of the neeping that involved in counting and, and uh, dominating rules. Um, with both sides having said something, there's a question, uh, motion to uh, end the debate on the appeal. How many other people wish to speak on the appeal? Ha show of hands, please. Okay. A two-thirds vote being necessary to end the debate on the appeal. All those in favor of ending the debate on the appeal, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, the affirmative has it. The chair won't even get his chance to speak in closing, but it doesn't matter that much. All those in favor of the chair's ruling that the proposed change that uh, Mr. Bloom proposed is, uh, uh, the chair ruled that it was not germane. All those in favor of the chair's ruling, the motion is not germane, raise your hands, hands down. Those opposed to the chair's ruling, Hands down. There being less than a majority in the, in, the, uh, in, in the negative, the chair's ruling is sustained. The motion is not germane. Mr. Bloom would be able to propose to suspend the rules and, and propose it as a new constitutional amendment once we get through all these things here. Therefore, I was trying to get back to some scheduling issues here. The chair, a parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Blog. I do want you to come up here. Please, don't stand around the edges of the room kibitzing. Kibitzing. Kibitzing, thank you. <laughs> what? They are both on the nitpicking and flyspecking committee. Gary Blog, uh, Mr. Chair of... What? Face the audience. Face the audience. Um, for those, uh, you have something about there about Committee of the Whole tomorrow. Could you, for those who are first timers, could you explain that to them so they understand it better? Yes. That was what I was trying to do, Mr. Blog, <laughs> before you interrupted the chair with your parliamentary inquiry. A, a committee of the whole is a parliamentary device whereby we treat the entire group here as if we were a committee meeting. Um, the committee cannot actually do direct action on a proposal. All they can do is discuss it and make recommendations to the meeting as a whole. If, this is, if these two items are discussed in committee of the whole, it would allow for a certain, a certain level of informality in the consideration of the motions. And the chair is trying to get this scheduled so that we do the committee of the whole meeting tomorrow and that we actually vote upon these two items at the Sunday business meeting. I do hear that there are, I, I, I'm just gonna assume there are objections to us doing that. Uh, I'm assuming a motion to uh, uh, not refer this to committee of the whole is, is not a valid motion. Therefore, the chair is going to assume a motion to refer this to committee of the whole tomorrow afternoon uh, and, and take a vote on that. If it, does it, is it necessary to debate why we do it? All right, thank you. This is the first section is on the Committee of the Whole. Or, uh, Mr. Buff. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yeah. can you uh, clarify whether we continue the video during the Committee of the Whole? Oh, yes. Um, actually, that's true. The, the motion, I, I, Mr. Buff reminds me of this, yes. The motion is to refer the motion to Committee of the Whole, but to direct that the uh, deliberations of the Committee of the Whole also be recorded and posted. Any objection to the modifying the motion accordingly? Can we just take a vote on that? I hope. No one needs to debate it? Thank you. Okay. Well, I had, to, I had to ask, okay. All those in favor, a majority being necessary to refer this to a committee of the whole, um, uh, all those in favor of referring this committee of the whole tomorrow, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed. Hands down. All those opposed to referring to committee of the whole, raise your hands. Huh? Hands down. Uh, the affirmative has it. The Committee of the Whole is scheduled for tomorrow. The next item, and I want to deal with this, is the Committee of the Whole coming out of that, is to also schedule these two items for the Sunday meeting. Uh, that, and, uh, that, is there a motion to do that? So, yeah. Okay, and it's, it's multiple people have done it. Do we wish to debate this? No. At least one does. I'd like to I, the, the motion is debatable, and there is a, you're allowed one for each side before we can call the question. Would one person like to speak in favor of, do, of the referral? 
In favor of referring, uh, you know, scheduling it for, to, for Sunday. Yes? Mr. Matthews? Winton Matthews, how can we schedule the e microphone? Okay, how can we schedule the e pluris unum section if we haven't even decided if we are even going to discuss it? We can it, easily if it doesn't if it gets if it gets killed. We uh, I, I'm sorry, I'll address the it, it's a par that's actually a parliamentary inquiry. If yeah. it gets killed, it doesn't come up at its scheduled time. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there a speech in favor of scheduling these two items for Sunday? Uh, yes. Uh, doc Dr. Adams, thank you. Am I working for 10 minutes again? Uh, and, and still Andrew Adams. Uh, we, we've just had the debate about whether we should or not debate um, four and six. We're going to have a similar debate about C. pluribus Hugo. It was raised in the issue there that we don't have the information yet about the nomination data. We need this nomination data to have a proper debate about whether we want to pass this this year. We can only get that information on Saturday night. Therefore, we should take this um, to a decision on Sunday. A uh, speech against scheduling it for Sunday, Mr. Gallo. The claim has been raised by the The claim has been raised by the proponents of this motion that this is solving a general problem, not a one-year problem. We have six decades worth of data to play with. We don't get a lot more data with one extra year if this is a general problem. If this is a one-year problem, that's an entirely different thing, but the proponents of the motion have claimed that this isn't, that this is a more general problem that is being addressed. And we've got lots of historic data about Hugo nominations. Is there any objection to ending the debate on the scheduling motion? Yes. Okay. Uh, all right, all right, all right, okay. No, no, sorry. <laughs> Who wants to speak in favor of scheduling the proposal thus? Uh, yes, sir, and you'll need to give your ba you know, badge information. In favor of scheduling these for uh, Sunday. My name is Jameson Quinn. I'm a uh, co-author of audience, the proposal. Speak to the audience, not to the... Yeah, okay. My name is Jameson Quinn. I'm a co-author of the proposal. Um, I believe we should uh, schedule this for Sunday. Um, the, the objection to scheduling it for Sunday was that the, that it, we already have data. In fact, we only have full data for one year, 1984. Um, and in fact, and also, we don't have any data for when a problem came up. It is a general fact that a problem came up, can come up if it comes up even once. However, um, we, in order to see if these proposals would help with a problem, it would help in order to demonstrate, you know, we, the authors of the proposal believe that it would help, but in order to demonstrate that um, to, to, the, to the general um, committee, um, we believe that the data from this year would be helpful. Thank you. Okay, um, let's see, a, that, was in fa uh, that was opposed to confirming, so uh, have, we, uh, have we had an even number yet? Yes, we've had an even number of speeches. Did we, we got... Uh, I want to make sure. We, did, didn't, we know one more against. One favor. That was right. That was in favor. One speech in opposed to po uh, po or yeah opposed to postponement or to scheduling rather. Um, I, I, well, I don't know. I'm talking, did you see who got up first? I did not. Yeah, I think I think it was Ms. Olson. Okay, yeah. My name is Priscilla Olson. I want to see how it's spelled. Hmm, okay. <laughs> and um, I really um, am tired of extending everything and saying we must meet on this day, we must meet on this day. Some of us have a lot to do with this convention and the idea of deliberately pushing things into an, an extra day of the business meeting when it may in fact not be needed. Is, is really kind of upsetting. Additionally, I don't see how one data point of this year's 
extraordinary uh, issues with the Yugos will necessarily help us decide. <laughs> it's just one year. Yeah, that's, you know, potentially it will, but I don't think it will. It's one year. And uh, holding it off for that reason makes no sense. I believe there might be people trying to move to call the question on this. I'm not sure. Did I? Yeah. Is there a second? Okay. How many people still want to debate whether or not we should postpone it? Show of hands, please. Schedule it for Sunday. To schedule it. To schedule it for Sunday, yes. All right. Thank you. All those in favor of uh, calling the question on the matter of whether we should postpone the and schedule these for Sunday. All those in fa favor of ending the debate, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed to ending the debate, hands down. There being more than two-thirds in favor, the motion uh, to close debate uh, passes. The question requiring a majority is, shall these two items be scheduled for Sunday, Sunday's business meeting? We still haven't put debate time limits on them. We will do that. All those in, for what purpose does the member rise? Parliament member will come into the microphone and state his parliamentary inquiry. Uh, I'm Eric Shulman, and my question is, are we debating, are we asking whether we are scheduling for Sunday in this order in particular, or is what order we discuss them on Sunday a separate issue? The chair intended to take them, yes. The chair, the question was whether the, uh, would this be the order we take them up? The chair intended to take them up in this order, and uh, there is an, uh, and the, and the debate, and the, and that was the intent of the motion, and the debate has been ended on that, so there's no more motions accessible to it. When it comes up, it would be in order. When it comes up on Sunday, it would be in order to lay one of them, on, lay the first one on the table, which is not what it means in British, and <laughs> to set it aside temporarily and bring it back up when we got back to it. All right. Uh, a parliamentary inquiry. Remember, we'll state their inquiry. Please come to the microphone and state their inquiry. The reason I'm standing is I was about to take the, about to uh, put the motion. Sorry. That's okay. Um, we have sorry. We have been discussing this, and it comes up a lot as though these are we are now voting together on four and six and EPH to both be scheduled on Sunday. Is yes, that the case? That is the question. The question is to schedule the two items on this slide on for for consideration Sunday. On the question to, to consider these two items on Sunday, a majority being necessary to do so, raise your hands if you're in favor of scheduling them for Sunday. Hands down those opposed. Hands down, the chair believes there's affirmative, the, 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 there's a majority in the affirmative. There's a majority in the affirmative. These items are scheduled for consideration at the Sunday meeting. They will come up after anything that hasn't yet been resolved before them. Um, the next item would be on setting the debate time limits, but uh, can, I, can I do the debate time limits, or do you, is this relevant to these, Mr. Bloom? Yeah. Related to the one that Ms. Secor just had, uh, have we ever reached the point of, of discussing the uh, e pluribus Hugo? No, I'm going to do it when we get to the debate time limit on it. Okay. Yeah, they've been but scheduled like for that time, but they are still within our, within our grasp because of that. That's what I answered in an earlier parliamentary inquiry. It will be in order to move to postpone indefinitely EPH in a, in a moment or two, okay? Let's try and get a debate time set on four and six. The chair has proposed... Debate time limit, wake up. <laughs> I know, I know it's been such a long intermission, yes. Uh, <laughs> the chair proposes 10 minutes. Did I hear 6-0? Okay, I didn't think so. 16, thank you. I uh, by the way, before I go on, it is pretty obvious that with the size of the room, the number of people wishing to speak is that the practical debate time is about one and a half times the amount of time adopted. Okay, thank you. All right, 16. How much? Eight, and I think, and 24, and 20, and was there a four out there? Yes. I think I heard a four, okay, yes, all right. Any others? And 12. 32, no. No, 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 no. Masochist. All right, what are the top, what are the times? You got the mic. I gotta have some fun up here. 24. 20, 16, 12, 10, 8, or 4? Twi uh, let's get out. We got only about 25 minutes, folks. 24. All those in favor of 24 minutes, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed. That doesn't get it. Next is 20. 
All those in favor of 20, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, what's next? 16. 16, those in favor of 16 minutes, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down. 12. 12, in favor of 12, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Oh, that's close, but the chair believes the affirmative has it. Affirmative has it, and that is 12 minutes. Very well. Okay, now, I know you wanted it here. B14 is the debate time on E Pluribus Hugo. The chair recognizes Mr. Bloom. Really? Thank you. My name is Kent Bloom, and I would like to move to postpone indefinitely. Microphone. I move to postpone indefinitely. The question is on moving, uh, postponing indefinitely E Pluribus Hugo. Mr. Bloom, you get first, uh, just a moment. Let's catch up here. Just a moment, it's B, uh, the, the secretary has got to get caught up here. Okay. All right, Mr. Bloom. Mr. Chairman, even more than the previous motion that I made, I believe this one is excessively premature to have any discussion. As we have discussed in the other motions that, and, and, and scheduling issues, the data necessary to make this is not going to be available this year. It might not be available uh, un, until uh, after the Hugo Awards next year, uh, if it's done in the traditional way, because we only have one data point that's not in the series. And if we, you have one uh, anomaly, it's simply not worth, or, or not statistically or otherwise valid to consider that um, as the, uh, a method, as a motivation for action until you have verified that this is actually a, a problem and not a measurement or, in this case, a social issue. A speech opposed to postponement in favor of consideration. Oh, my gosh. Any oh, yeah, the maker of the original motion. Yes. Yeah, uh, who made, who made, yeah, you're the maker of the original motion, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah one, of the, one of the makers. Ms. Yes, Mr. Quinn. And so in the previous discussion, I said that we needed the Sunday data. Uh, however, um, as both a statistician and a voting um, systems expert, um, I can say that um, the, 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 the requirement for the additional data from Sunday is only as an extra demonstration of the effectiveness of this, me of this method. I believe that there is sufficient theoretical grounds to, uh, to debate this method and sufficient um, simulation evidence in order to debate this method with or without the, any data that we may ga gain from Sunday. Thank you. Uh, there are other people who want to speak whether we should or should not postpone it. Let's, uh, Mr. Lorenz, in favor of killing this. The theory is fine. Facts are a different matter. Actual real world experience is a different matter. I have administered the Hugos in 1998, 2002, 2006, and unfortunately, 2015. Uh, there, this proposal would, is extremely complicated. It adds a lot of work to the Hugo administrators. It adds work to the programming needed. It is complicated to try to explain to the voters what the hell is going on with it. I do not think it's very practical at all. I could go on a lot longer if indeed we go to the committee of the whole tomorrow to describe why I don't think it works. But for the purpose of this, I will just say, based on my experience, this won't work. Uh, in favor of consideration, somebody who hasn't spoken before. Yeah, oh, right, yes, sorry, yes, Mr. Wad, yes, the, the lead maker. Hi, I'm Kilo Wad again, I'm the lead for EPH. Uh, addressing the issue of complexity and the extra work for the Hugos, actually, it doesn't change anything in how people vote. So the instructions to the nominators will be exactly the same. One of the key things that we were looking at when we were developing this was do no harm. If there are no slates from here on out, EPH will change nothing in the results. 
It's designed so that only if you're getting this misrepresentation coming in will there be an effect. And I'll explain how that works when we have our committee of the whole. As far as coding, it's already coded. I've got it written, it's ready to go. If the Hugo administrators would be, can provide a common delimited text file, the code will work. That's all that it needs. I'm also volunteering to work with them so that the administrators are not having to do that, whatever it takes. The other thing to keep in mind is that if we approve it this time, we've got more time if we feel that we need to tweak it after the results of the 2015. The thing that we need to decide here today is, do we even want to hear it? Not, is it a good idea? So all of the discussion about is this a good idea or is it not, that's not where we're at yet. Does it, is there enough of a problem from what we've seen in 2015 this year that we need to do something? If the answer is yes, we need to hear the options, both four and six and EPH. The member must yield the floor. The time for debate in favor of consideration has expired. There's not much in opposed to it. Is there any objection, is there any objection to ending the debate? I, I'm asking it the other way around. Uh, if there's no, if, how many other people want to speak to it? No. Is there any objection to ending the debate at this time? No. No. Very well. On the question to postpone indefinitely, a two-thirds vote against consideration being necessary to kill this. All those in favor of the consideration of E Pluribus Hugo, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed to its consideration, raise your hands. There being less than two-thirds in the negative, the motion, uh, the post motion is not postponed. It will be scheduled for referral to committee of the whole tomorrow. It will be uh, considered for a vote at Sunday's meeting. Now we get the debate time limit. <laughs> Mr. Yellow. The Mr. Yellow. I move to substitute. Oh, that may I the member let the let the member speak. I move to substitute for the adoption language which calls for this to become an amendment to the Constitution to substitute a motion creating a committee to study the matter, which, by the way, is in order by our president. It is in order. This, would, uh, this is a motion by substitution to substitute for the entire constitutional amendment a motion to create a committee, committee to consider the matter. To consider the matter. The, the matter, yes. And to report back next year. Is there a second to that motion? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, it's an interesting question. The, the, the point of order has been, would this not be referring this matter to a committee, this, the proposal on the floor to a committee? The chair rules the motion in order based on past precedent where constitutional amendments have been converted into study committees at the preliminary business meeting. Um, I note uh, for reference purposes, page 15 of the minutes of the PhilCon business meeting from the <laughs> Millennium PhilCon. Yes. We all have that with us, then. right? 14 years ago. Okay. <laughs> It's, it's a motion to create a, a Hugo study committee yeah. to, co to consider the matters within the scope of E Pluribus Hugo. Do we need to debate this? I don't know. Mr. Yallo has effectively given an initial speech for it if he, unless he wants to give another one. To, no? You've, a speech against then. Um, Dr. Lurie. I would like to amend Mr. Yallo's suggestion. As a secondary amendment in order or not? As a se because for an amendment by substitution, yes. I would like to amend it, say that we refer this to a committee uh, to consider, continue considering it even after we have voted on it on Sunday. No, that is not in order okay. because you, know, All right. in, in that you case, can create a new committee later. Okay. You well, can, and you can do that later, but not right now. You well, in that case, I think we all know there is a problem. I do not think that people that caused the problem are going to go away. And I think we need to start taking action now so that we can refine it next year and have something happen. I don't think we can survive three years of this. Uh, Mr. Glazer, is this a speech in favor? Point of order. Okay, try it. Let's see. 
my name is Glenn Glazer. I believe that Ms. Lurie's comments, or Dr. Lurie's comments, <laughs> was based on the idea that even if it was referred to committee, it would still be voted on. My understanding is that if it is referred to committee, it will not be voted on. The parliamentary inquiry uh, is, uh, the motion on the floor is to throw away E Pluribus Hugo entirely, tear it up, and insert a whole new motion that creates a committee to, dis to, to consider Hugo-related stuff which would then be discussed by that committee and report back next year. It's a rep it is a rep the motion to refer to committee No. No, I don't think so. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, actually, they uh, would act the motion to create that committee would have to be yeah, cuz it's cuz it substitutes for what got proposed. That's a good point. The motion to refer to committee would have to be discussed on Sunday cuz that's the substitute. All right. Yes, all right. But it but that's only if the substitute passes. Uh, was that a speech in favor of the creator? No, that was a speech against right there. A speech... Now, that was an inquiry. doesn't count. Dr. Lurie's uh, motion uh, was against ref uh, creating the committee. Someone who wishes to speak in favor of creating the committee. Anybody? Okay, somebody wants to speak against creating it uh, over here, then. Jack Foy. Uh, Thank you. My name is Jack Foy. Uh, I'd like to uh, point out that the origin of this motion was, in fact, already an extensive discussion among fans within a uh, within a written documented uh, uh, process on uh, on a particular blog, uh, and and so there already has been a ton of consideration, although not within this body, on this on this motion. And I think it's already refined well enough that we should consider it as it stands. Uh, that was uh, a po. Uh, is there an objection to ending the debate at this time? No. Okay, a two-thirds vote being necessary to, uh, uh, no, no, sorry, yes, a two-thirds vote, there's no objection to ending the debate. The question is on postponing the motion indefinitely. No. Uh, <laughs> sorry, you did throw a lot of things at me. Let me get it, yeah, thank you. The question is on, yeah, you're right, I blew it, okay. The question is on substituting a new proposal to create a study committee for the whole matter. All those who are in favor, what? Well, a majority, majority to, to amend by substitution. Sorry, yes, a good way. A majority being necessary to, to substitute a new motion to create a study committee. All those in favor of creating the study committee, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, the negative has it, the motion to amend by substitute fails. Does anyone still want to fiddle around with this before we go to time limits? I'm sure they want to. I don't think so. The chair proposes 30 minutes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, 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 wait. 42. The first one is 42, yeah. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Quiet, please. Other times? Did I hear a 60, 60? Yes. Yes. 60. A 10. Can we try this? Time, yes. Everybody... 22. 22. 22. 36. 36. Don't joke, please, folks. We're running out of time. There's a 24. 16. A 24 in there? Did you get that? What's that? 24. Yeah, 24. We got that. Okay, before we close this, what numbers do we have? We have 60, 42, 36, 30, 24, 22, 16, and 10. Was there a 20 in there? No, I didn't hear a 20. I, guess a 20. I did not hear yeah, a 20. Put a 20 in there then. 20. Okay. Any others? I hope not. All right, let's start with 60. All, uh, all those in favor of 60 minutes, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. That doesn't do it. What's next? 42. 42 minutes, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. The negative has that. 36. 36, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. The chair thinks the affirmative has it for 36. 36 it is. 36 minutes. Uh, inquiry, Ms. Secor. No, no, t debate time limits reset every day. Every day, it starts over again. All right. 
I believe, unfortunately, I really, I didn't want to, but I, I think we have to have a technical time out here. One more. This meeting is in recess for two minutes, and this has got to be a quick two minutes, folks. We're running out of time. All right, it is 11.37, and the meeting will return to order. 12.37, sorry. I got, I've got an angle here. The next item is got to, this is going to be the last item for today because we are going to run out of time. That is the report of the Mark Protection Committee. I am the chairman of the MPC and therefore taking the con for the first time, Mr. Jared Dashoff. Mr. Chairman, the Mark Protection Committee report is attached. I'm not going to go into it in detail, but I do want to say that it has been an extraordinarily productive and useful year for the Mark Protection Committee. We fought off a very serious uh, and expensive challenge to one of our service marks through a potential uh, suit that was not followed up at last year's Worldcon. That cost us a lot of money, and a lot of groups, including last year's Worldcon and several other committees, donated toward it. We implemented the proposal that the last year's meeting asked us to form a, an entity to pursue registration of marks outside of the United States. Uh, it turned out that trusts aren't the right kind of legal form. They're not allowed, basically. Uh, but we did create, thanks to the cooperation of an existing nonprofit that was in the process of going out, uh, suspending operations, they saved us a lot of money. We took over their charter and Worldcon Intellectual Property a California nonprofit corporation, which is tax exempt under Section 501c3, uh, is and is completely controlled by the members of the Mark Protection Committee, was formed, and we have begun the process of registering our service marks in the EU, which is our next highest priority. In addition, we we did a budget analysis and worked out proposals, and the committee voted a resolution that will be considered later in the agenda, not today to recommend a change in the way that we are funded because the funding mechanism for the Mark Protection Committee has not changed or been adjusted since 1984 and has thoroughly gotten out of whack with inflation and the increasing amount of demands on our time. We very much want to thank those people who helped to donate, those organizations and individuals who donated money to the EU Mark, uh, reg uh, mark registration cost. In, uh, and they are listed in the agenda. Lone Star Con 3 made a special contribution. Uh, anticipation, Kansmoff did. And uh, uh, Dave Lally personally contributed a quarter of the cost, and we're very thankful for that. That is, concludes uh, our main report, in, in oral report, I should say. And therefore, the only other business is to deal for that I know of is, uh, unless there are questions of the MPC, which I don't think we have time for really. The chair would note that the speaker is not the chair of the business meeting, but, <laughs> <laughs> and therefore the next item of business, if there are no questions for the MPC, is, are there any questions? Yeah, no questions. he's right. <laughs> the next item of business is to open up the call for nominations for members of the Mark Protection Committee. Very good. Mr. Olson, for what purpose does the member rise? Who would you? I nominate the three members whose terms are expiring. Mr. Glazer. I would like to nominate Mr. Bruce Farr. He has accepted in writing. Any other nominations? Or are you just handing up? Thank you. All right. Seeing no other nominations, the nominations for the Mark Protection Committee are closed. The election will occur tomorrow. And now I will return. You're not talking into it. I'm not talking into it, apparently. <laughs> the election will occur tomorrow, and now I return Mr. Stanley to the chair. Yay! Yay. We'll be, he'll be back. 
Just so you know, Stephen Boucher has accepted via email, and I need the acceptance of the other two people. Yes, you need to sit, come up and fill out a form for the uh, secretary. That brings us up to no more time remaining for today. Uh, does a member, are there members rising to for recognition for size? I see hands. Uh, yes. Uh, they're not going to be posted anywhere. You want to re uh, read off the names again, please? Who, the, 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 Stephen Boucher, Scott. Oh, Stephen Boucher, Scott Dennis, and Donald Eastlake the third. And Bruce Farr. And Bruce Farr. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, those names. Okay. Those. I you were about. We can elect up to three. No, we will elect three. The, <laughs> three of the four. There are three positions open for three-year terms. Are there any other questions before we adjourn for today? Uh, members need to rise to be reckoned. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Mitchell, I completely forgot. Oh, that is foolish of me. I have to return the chair. Mr. Mitchell, who has been the, the web host of, our, uh, of, the, of the Worldcon websites, was uh, scheduled to address us, and he said this is the only day he can talk to us. So, Mr. Mitchell, if you would go ahead and address him, then we will adjourn after that. Thank you. George. Hi, I'm George Mitchell. It's been my honor and my pleasure to host WSFUS.org and WorldCon.org since they were first registered over 20 years ago. And it's been fun, uh, except for email administration, which gets less fun every year. You've never heard of me, which is the best indication that the current arrangement has been successful. But it's time, and the society needs something more professional and permanent. I'm willing to aid and assist and, and advise in whatever way the society wishes. Thank you all. My heartfelt thanks for having had the pleasure of providing the hosting all this time. Is, is there any objection to the meeting adopting a resolution of, of suspending the rules and, adop and adopting a resolution thanking Mr. George Mitchell for his many years of service to the World Science Fiction Society? There being no objection, Mr. Mitchell, thank you very much. That brings us to the end of our allotted time for today's meeting. We have just barely managed to accomplish all of the things we are required to do as a preliminary meeting, but hardly anything else. That includes financial reports and also the, re the resolutions. We will pick up at that point where we left off in tomorrow, at tomorrow's meeting, and we will not get to the constitutional amendments until after we have dealt with the remaining resolutions. Uh, our, I have a couple of announcements. Um, First of all, the committee to discuss the electronic signature amendment will meet immediately after the close of this meeting in the hallway outside this room. I believe the videographer has something. Uh, if you'll come to the microphone, Ms. Hayes. I want to tell you what an honor it is to have been able to record this, pro this meeting for the World Science Fiction Society. We have now had 85 views on the first segment of this meeting. And I'm happy now to be able to bring the meeting to the entire world. Are there any other questions regarding procedure, regarding tomorrow's meeting? Very well. It is 12.45, and this meeting, the preliminary business meeting is adjourned. <laughs>